Alright hey guys, today we're going to practice some probability using thatquiz.org. The site's nice because it gives us a combination of simple probability and compound probability. You can practice them in isolation or you can mix them all up. Before we get started with some examples, I'm going to show you a few quick tips on the program so you can figure out how to navigate the website to best help you practice probability. On the left side, you'll notice there are some different options here. We have length, that's just the number of problems. So you can do 10, you can go to 20, 30, you can go open if you just want to practice uh, continuously. The level here, um, each level introduces a new type of problem. So you start off with level one and it's just some simple probability. By the time you get up to level three and level four, you've got some compound probability in there. So you can practice them in isolation if you'd like. The timer, I would always leave the timer off. I don't like to have a timer because then I don't feel pressure to get it solved um, within a specific amount of time. Feedback, I would make sure you leave feedback on. That way if you get the problem wrong, you can see what the correct answer is as well as the pro what the problem was and you can go back and try it again. Okay, this focus button here, this is if you have a specific type that you know you need to practice. Um, you can go to, say I need to practice level three, I could go to level three, click focus, and every single problem that it gives me is going to be that similar type of probability. Okay, so for your practices, you're going to do 10 problems in level three and 10 problems in level four without selecting focus. You're going to leave it unchecked. That way you're going to get a mixture of all the different ones because our goal is to be able to figure out when are we going to use each type of strategy. Okay, while I go through the examples, I'm going to go ahead and leave focus checked so that we can get one example of each type. So with that being said, let's get an example from level one. Our first example from level one is an example of simple probability. So it says, in a single bag, Magdalena has some jelly beans of different colors, four green and one red. If she pulls out one jelly bean out of the bag, how probable is it that the jelly bean is green? So this is simple probability because there's one action occurring. She's reaching in one time, pulling out one jelly bean. So to start, we need to figure out what are the total number of outcomes possible and then we also need to figure out what are the number of favorable outcomes. So this just means that we are first going to figure out how many total outcomes are there. Well, I like this site because off to the side they show me the total amount of data in our problems. We have four green jelly beans and one red. That's a total of five jelly beans. Okay? So that would be our total number of possible outcomes. On the top of our fraction, we need to include our favorable outcomes. And we wanna know how probable is it that the jelly bean is green? Well, green was four, so that's gonna give us a probability of four out of five. Okay, on this website, you can simplify fractions if you would like to, but you don't have to. Four fifths cannot be simplified, so we're just going to enter it in here as four fifths. If you get it correct, it's just going to give you a check mark and move on to the next one. If you miss a problem, it's going to give you an X. It'll say what the problem was and show you what the correct answer was. All right, here's an example of our level two problem. It says Liz has some marbles in two bags. In one bag, she has four blue and four purple marbles. In the other bag, she has six blue and two purple marbles. If Liz takes one marble out of the bag, what is the probability that both will be blue marbles? Okay, so this is an example of when we have two independent events. Since we have two separate bags, when I draw a marble out of this bag, it doesn't affect the bag that I have sitting over here. Okay, so they're independent events, but it's compound because there are two actions. I'm drawing one marble, and then I'm drawing another marble. Okay, so for this one, we're going to find the probability of each event happening. And then because it says this word both right here, it says both. Both is another way of saying and. So what's the probability that I get a blue one here and a blue one there? And the word and for probability implies that we're going to be multiplying. Okay, so for this one, for the first bag, we have bag one. There are a total of eight marbles. And we want to know the probability that it's going to be blue. Well, blue, that was the four. So the four, there's a probability of four out of eight. For our second bag, we have another eight possible marbles. But the blue is six. So we're going to have six out of eight. And then because it was both, we're going to be multiplying them together. That's going to give us a probability of 24 out of 64. We just multiply the numerators, 4 times 6 to get 24, and 8 times 8 to get 64. Again, here you could simplify this if you want. I'm a little lazy today, so I'm going to leave it as 24 out of 64. And we'll type that in here. 
All right, on to level three. This one says, Noelle Oki is a dairy farmer with customers in Connecticut and Rhode Island. In Connecticut, she sells to six restaurants, five supermarkets, and one cheese factory. In Rhode Island, she's gonna sell to three restaurants, eight supermarkets, and one cheese factory. They all send her new orders at the beginning of the week. And early Monday morning, she gets the first order from Connecticut and the first order from Rhode Island. How likely is it that neither one is from a restaurant? Okay, so this is another example of our compound probability. She's gonna get two separate orders from two separate states. They don't impact each other. But on this one, we're using this idea of neither one being from a restaurant. So that means it could be from anywhere else, just not a restaurant. And so since it's saying neither one, it's saying it's not this one and it's not this one. So again, that idea of and for this problem is going to imply that we're going to multiply. Okay, so for Connecticut over here, we have a total, we have six, five, and one. So that is 12 possible outcomes. And out of those 12, we want it to not be from a restaurant. So that leaves five supermarkets and one cheese factory. That is six possible. Okay, for our second one for Rhode Island, we have three plus eight is 11 plus one more. There's also 12 there. And there are three restaurants, that means we have nine that are not restaurants. And now we're just gonna multiply those together. So that's gonna give us nine times six on the top is 54. And on the bottom, 12 times 12 is 144. So our probability is gonna be 54 out of 144. Again, you can simplify if you'd like, I'm gonna leave it. So we've got 54, oops, 54 out of 144. All right, and our final example is going to be a level four problem. So this one says, Dorothy bought a box of donuts on Friday and again on Saturday. That's a lot of donuts. The donuts look the same on the outside but have different fillings inside. Each box always contains the same number of each kind. There are three chocolate, two jelly, and one cream, and six lemon. So if Dorothy ate only one donut on each day then gave her box to her friend, what is the probability that at least one of the donuts she ate had chocolate inside. Okay, so we have two of the same types of boxes, picking one donut out of each. So both of those again are independent events, but they're compound because we're doing two actions, eating a donut from this box and eating a donut from this box. Okay, on this one, because we have this idea of at least, so at least one of them, that's really saying, what's the probability that I ate a chocolate donut from this one? or from this one, okay? I could eat from both. That would still match that idea of at least, but it has to be at least one or the other. So this is not an and example. This is actually an or example, which means that we're going to be adding, okay? When we add, we have to be careful because we don't want to over add. We don't want to add anything twice. So for this one, we actually have a couple steps. We're gonna to have to find the individual probabilities first, and then we need to subtract the probability of both of them happening. Um, not because both of them can't happen, but because we don't wanna count anything twice. So for this one, the first box, um, both of them have the same combination. So we have this combination here, three and two and one and six. So if I add those together, I would end up with a total of 12. I have 12 donuts and I want the probability that she ate a chocolate one. Well, chocolate was three out of 12, okay? And then the second day she's gonna get the same box. So we have 12 again and three out of 12. Right now we're gonna add these together, okay? But then we also need to make sure that we're not double counting anything. So we're also going to be subtracting the probability of both of them. Okay, and so the probability of both of them, well, that's really when we have that three out of 12 times a three out of 12, because that's the and example. So that would be nine over 144. Okay, so I'm going to subtract nine over 144. Okay, when I do all of this and I add it all together, I'm gonna grab my calculator quick. I would have six twelfths and I would subtract nine over 144. And when I simplify it down, I end up getting the fraction of 7 sixteenths. It actually came out in my fraction or in my calculator as 0.4375. And I just hit that decimal, the fraction button to get 7 
over 16 as my final probability. So here, when it's this idea of or, we needed to add them together and then to subtract the probability of both of them happening for our compound event. So let's get that 7 16 typed in here. And we should be good to go. There you go. All right, so there are your four examples of the different levels. When you're practicing, you can make sure you've unchecked the focus button so that you get a mixture of all the different problems.